Um, hello, I'd like to share my Great Depression poetry with you. Um, we, we got um, orphans asking why their parents can't have a job. And this is what they usually build their houses out of, like wood, garbage bags, and anything they could find, really. But it started in 1929 and ended in 1939. Um, but how it started was companies did not have any money to give to their employees to feed their families, but the employees couldn't feed their families. But the rich people started to commit suicide because of the Great Depression. People started to run for their people started to run bank runs for their money before the Great Depression started. Soon after months, people started to lose their money and became poor. People were putting signs up on this on sticks and saying, "We need jobs, we need employment." They put up flyers about the country having no money. The people, the people even started to hop trains to go looking for work. Anybody would sell anything for money. Now, now jobless men keep going. You can't take care of our own. That means they couldn't take care of. The, they couldn't pay the people that were working for their jobs, so they had to fire them. And we got people sitting on the side of the road there with their houses and now. Fun fact, Herbert Hoover was elected for president in 1928. That was before the Great Depression started. And now, these are one of the trains, the hobos hop. And then, and then this is, now this right here is Alfred Salone, a, chair, a chairman of General Motors. That he put up signs saying back to the old days, the good old days again. But that was in 1939 when the Great Depression ended. Um, so Alfred Sloan, the chairman of General Motors, framed the question this way: Is American businesses in the future, as in case, has to be conducted as a competitive system? He answered: General Motors will not participate voluntarily in what not in, in what stands out 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 in crystal clear at the end of the road with with fur marks markets balanced budgets and lower taxes wood was right employment was only 3.9 percent in 1946 and it remained at roughly that level during most of the next decade the great depression was over now the great depression actually ended and prosperity restored by the sharp reduction in spending taxes and regulation at the end of World War II. Um, and exactly contrary to analysis of, I don't know what that word is, so-called economists, true unemployment did decline at the start of World War II. Some economists, especially Robert Higgs, which is a economist, he's still alive till this day. Um, has widely challenged that conclusion. Let's let's be blunt. If the recipe for economic recovery is putting tens of million millions of people in defense in defense plants or military marches, then having them make it drop make make or drop bombs on our enemies overseas, the value of the world peace is called into question. In truth, building tanks and feeding soldiers necessarily necessary as it as it was to winning the war became crushing financially burdened we merely traded debit for unemployment the expense of funding world war ii hiked the national debit from 49 billion in 1941 to almost 260 billion in 1945 in other worlds the war had only postponed in the issue of recovery Questions for Evan. Kobe. Um, was Hooper Hooper president throughout the whole Great Depression? Um he was president until nineteen forty five, wait the after World War Two ended. Because it was the decade of president. There's ten years between presentary. Um so once you're president you have 
10 years to be president. Well, until yeah, you, yeah. or until, what? <laughs> uh, Bo. It seems like you put a lot of emphasis on feeding soldiers and providing for them, so would have been more profitable to just join the army and go fight in World War II rather than stay there and be a hobo? Um, it would be more necessary to be a soldier to protect the country, but that's when, after World War II, that's when the country started to progress in money, like they started to gather more money, and the stock market was rebuilt, and everything was okay. Go on, Anthony. You said that the rich people killed themselves. Did they kill themselves because they were just tired? They were just in the Great Depression or because they were losing money? Um, no. It's because they would always be walking down the street and hobos would always be like, can I get money? Can I get money? Can I get extra? And they would give money until they got too sick of it and too sick of the Great Depression. So that's what caused them to commit suicide. Gavin? Um, did rich people have, like, jobs? Or was it just them? The rich people did have jobs, but most of them were older, so they were retired. And they had retirement money and saved up through their bank. Kobe? Oh, back to my earlier, my earlier question. Didn't the Great Depression end at when the world, when the world world? World War War Two ended. Yes, it ended actually. World War Two ended ended like ended the same year as the Great Depression did end. So how you said that Hubert Great Hubert was ended his presidency at, after the um after the war, but it would be. I didn't, I didn't go that far into Hoover. I was more thinking of how it started and how it ended. So I would like to share my group project on the Great Depression. I researched Hoovervilles, and this is my model of what one of the Hoovervilles, in my opinion, would probably look like. And um, most of them were built near rivers and streams. And right here you can see a river and a pond or lake. And then um, it feels like a little fire because they use wood and different utensils, not utensils, cardboard boxes and things like that, like scrap or junk for um, houses and things like that. So I have a little tire here and it's like to hold to um, have where the fire would be in, and then a little mini table out of wood with some they used old dishes that were thrown out for their dishes, and they have some water in these ones. I don't know if you can see it that well, but um, and then right here's for like a little a bigger dish for smaller dishes. And Hoovervilles had health risks to their inhabitants, inhabitants and the others that lived near the Hooverville as well. St. Louis Hoovervilles had a St. Louis Hooverville had its own mayor. This Hooverville thrived because it was funded by private donations. It maintained as itself as a freestanding community until 1936 when it was raised. Hooverville residents that were unemployed inhabitants took any work that became available often. Jobs such as fruit picking or packing is some two of the ones that they would use. And no two, no Hoovervilles were exactly the same. Other of different Hoovervilles, some were smaller than others, 
like a few hundred people, others were bigger. St. Louis, Missouri was home to one of the country's largest and longest standing Hoover Bells. That's all. Thank you. Yes. Do you know why? For water supplies. Oh, because they didn't have water. like plumbing or... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got to have me. Well, about current, I think. Best? No, no. Yeah, what is it? It's, um, it's supposed to represent steel or something leaning up against like a wall or something for shelter. And then the green is moss to keep warm. Mr. Tumble. You mentioned one of the Hoovervilles had its own mayor? Yes. Could you, did you learn any other? I, I'm interested in knowing more about that. Can you tell me more about like how did they become mayor? How did that all go down? Um, not right now, but I will let you know if I find anything else. Okay. So, um, I'm not sure what kinds, but I'm thinking different ones because it didn't specify on where I found it. So I'm thinking like, because they're using wooden different things, so there could be ticks and other things like that. Um, I don't really know. Kobe? Can you explain a little bit so I can speak? Any other questions for Gabby? Okay, give her a round of applause. Alright, so me and Sam here did look up and research how the great person affected the poor and we did a poster on it. How the great person affected poor families. People sold their children. They went to soup kitchen and bread line. And this is the most popular picture during the Great Depression. It has a mother with two kids. And people um, had a lot of hoover wagons because they couldn't afford fuel and their cars kind of broke down. And they had to live in cardboard jungles or hoover bills, which are really nasty places that had a lot of scrap wood, scrap metal. And they also, have, there a lot of people wore signs that said jobs wanted. And my great, my great grandfather was in the Great Depression and he was one of the only people who actually had a job and he worked on the railroad. And he fed everyone in his neighborhood and gave them money so they could have a family of their own. And after the Great Depression and people got back on their feet, um, they, he never had to do anything again. Like they mowed his lawn, they shoveled his driveway, they carried in his groceries because he kept them alive. Thank you. Um, stay up there. Okay. Sam, are you going to say anything? All right, questions for these guys?
How much money would it be if you sold the pistols to the pistols? Well, we didn't research them. Yeah, we didn't research how much money it would be. Um, where did the families, the black and the white families, did they look like the same thing? Like, did they I think the white families had more decent jobs that paid more. That's why a lot, like, um, us being um, presentation ago, I saw a, a, a skit about how black, like, the, um, discrimination. Uh, Kaylee? Um, so, did your grandfather have that job initially, or did he got, get fired from one job, but then the boy yeah, did that? He had that job initially. Like, that was his job when it started. Uh, Owen? Um, the biggest moment you wanted to stop and stuff, or was there like, give him a shower and stuff like that? They would just, like, do him simple favors. Yeah, like, do all of his stuff. Like, they clean his house, they clean his car, they empty his garbage, they do everything for him because he kept them alive when they were starving. I think, I think we have one more question or comment. Yeah, right. Their transportation was limited and their food and liquid were limited. Yeah, can you hear that? Are they here? I don't know. They, they were in other classrooms and stuff. Okay. Well, we can, we can continue. Um, who is ready to go? Who's in here? All right, you and Lila. That's okay. I. Are you doing a PowerPoint? Yeah. Log out of my computer or log. should be able to test the screen to get it to go to each one. Um, soup kitchen started during the Great Depression by a person named Al Capone. Um, they were kind of more useful during the Great Depression because more people are homeless and then now because more people, there's more job opportunities and that's just an estimation. We didn't get a lot of information on that. Kitchens. Soup kitchens are stands that can be inside or outside. Soup kitchens give people that can't afford food like like soup go and get it at a soup kitchen. They make the soup in the kitchen or a kitchen like a stand, like stand, where they make the food. The food is soup. Al Capone had poor immigrant parents and he quit school after sixth grade and um, became a member of um, street gangs and to cover up his bad history he um, started the first soup kitchen and others took um, Al Capone's soup kitchen and that's why they were um, soup kitchens during the Great Depression and his soup kitchen got demolished in, in the 1950s.
who have met, made a friend. Johnny Chirayo was born in Italy, January 20th, 1882. Over time, Johnny, the Al Capone, developed a close line, lifetime friendship. After healing from the wounds from the infamous St. Valentine's Day Massacre, Johnny was put in prison. When he came out, he was a changed man. He decided. So his wife and his mother moved to Italy and left Al Capone in change of his woman. In 1957, he had a heart attack and died. George Moran was born August 21st, 1893. At age 19, George Moran joined several street gangs, and for that reason, before he was 21, he had been jailed three times. Over time, Al Capone and George Moran became longtime rivals. On February 14, 1929, Moran had his men try to assassinate Al Capone and Johnny Torrey. The police, of course, thought it was Al Capone's doing, and George Moran went unpunished. George Moran had a way with Al Capone, and they tried to kill each other. Soup kitchen fun facts. The Y soup has a relatively cheap meal. That's one of the nutrients and it's cheap and easy to food. <sighs> soup was the perfect food for charity and consumed daily by millions of Americans who were out of work and completely just couldn't afford any food. Thus, the soup kitchen, an institution where free soup was served and unemployed, became a preeminent pre institution of the era. It was a place to find a warm meal for those who had nothing, and that's something everybody can understand. This presented an interesting opportunity for some most notable than famous Chicago. Mr. Khan was a crack in world who had risen to prominence by defying the government and overseeing black market liquor sales during Prohibition. When the Great Depression hit, he was also one of the first private citizens to open a soup kitchen, one which fed hundreds daily. According to accounts on, of the time, his private soup kitchen served <coughs> over 5,000 people on Thanksgiving Day. and of 1930. Uh, for this service, Capone was worshipped in Chicago. He's seen as a man of the people, the savior of the city, and therefore untouchable by the law. What about all of the other soup kitchens? It seems like the majority of your presentation was focused on Elk Home, but not actually on soup kitchens. Yeah. 
So what about all the other soup kitchens? We did because he's our home because he was the creator of the soup kitchens. Well, well, he was the creator of one soup one kitchen. One of the soup kitchens. And when we looked it up, some more of the websites were saying that he was the person who started the first soup kitchen. Okay. What about all the other people that started soup kitchens after him? That's what I guess I got confused because it seemed like your project was more about elk home, which would have been cool by itself, um, but less about, I mean, all the other soup kitchens. How did people find soup kitchens? How did soup kitchens help the community? Who went to the soup kitchens? When were they open? These are all things that I still want to know the information on. Um, Gavin, did Al have like a full first name or was it just Al? Elpis, Elpis, Gabriel, Paul, Apollo, that's just Okay. Can we release the kobolds during the Great Depression? Um, we. A lot of stuff about that being trained. Where people had to hop train and go to different places to find work. Bobos just jumped into moving box cars and sometimes led to death. Then the president found out what people were doing. Then the president hired guards and bulls for the railroad. It ended up getting hard for hobos to find work. Because if the hobos did not have a ticket, guards would arrest or beat them. During the Great Depression, millions of unemployed, unemployed men became hobos. Homeless patients who wandered in search of work. In response to the increasing number of hobos, the railway, the railway hired guards, known as bulls, bulls were in charge of feeding more domestic hobos who boarded the train from Africa. Hobos traveled, traveled the U.S. right into the rail since the Civil War. Uh, the romantized image of the hobos peaked during the depressions of the 1930s. When many took to the rails in des desperate search for work, industry noted that hobos, hobo, a hope that a hobo differs from a tramp or a bum. Most hobos would agree that a hobo works in laundry. The tramp screams in laundries, and the bum drinks in laundries. Hobos were, off, were often welcomed in areas of underemployment or when their labor was required, they were also feared as a man. When unemployment was high or when the hobos labor was no longer needed, many times they were literally driven out of town by the local police who would meet income and freight trains and take the hobos to the country. For the hobos, the train is their primary method of transport as they roam the country in search of work. Because of this, hobos have an intimate, intimate connection and knowledge of trains and railroads in general. In the early 20th century, the increased use of cars and trucks brought the Reduction in the number of passengers and strides to be transported. This will be ultimately led to this, this decreasing rail networks upon which the hobos could travel. The, the nearly total replacement of steam engines by the November 1950 also could. could the decline of the hobo steam. Steam engines had to make regular spots to 
As you can see, the photo right here is a hobo family, and they're living in some sort of scrap and boxes. And this is their food. They mostly ate like corn, wheat, and whatever they could find out of the garbage. Over here is this girl that was trying to keep herself amused and just sat there on a toilet all day. She had nothing to do. Thank you. Leave it up there. Fall off the train soon. You don't really know if they're going to make something. Cameron? Um, how come they didn't like put the bodies in the car? Because They would find their own food. Okay. Give them a round of applause. Final one. We study the, the orphanages during the Great Depression. These days were this day would. This day will later become known as Black Thursday as we soon fo followed by more Black Days. By Wednesday of the following week, the stock market had declined by 33%. The era in the United States known as the Great Depression had begun. Within days, every farmer, lawyer, butcher, and other professional who had sold their property to invest in the booming stock market of the 1920s had lost everything that they owned and made that they owned money to the banks in addition to what they lost. The effects that this loss would had on American families was drastic. Added to the stock market crash was the chaotic disaster, known as the Dust Bowl, where a giant dust cloud settled on nearly everything from the Rocky Mountains into the west to Washington. D.C. in the East, this caused many more families to leave their homes after having lost everything they had. Both of these disasters led to 
a drastic increase. Increases in the number of children in America, orphaned, orphaned in foster care systems became many families felt they could no longer afford to provide equip care for their children. By the mid-1930s, the number of the children in American orphanages had raised to its peak of 144,000, and the number of children in the American foster care system had risen to 248,000. Farms in the 1930s were Diversified. Growing a variety of crops in, it, in the fields, vegetables in the ground and fruit in the orchard. Small <coughs> farmers usually raise chicken, eggs, hogs, and cattle, as well keeping hours and and mules for work, and sometimes sheep for wool and meat. Some, some farmers keep bees and harvest the honey. Women bake, women bake their own bread during the Great Depression. Their self sophisticated carried over into their social <laughs> life. One dish Years as church pilots were input way way to have farm and share food on radios and in women's magazines homes. to search their food budget with pastries and meals like crepe chips, beef on toast or waffles, chili macaroni and cheese soup and chick crunchy cream chicken on biscuits were popular meals in the 70s or more years since the Great Depression. A lot has changed on the farms from rural America. Usually supplies on only one main crop. Today, extreme reasons has become multiple. How, how did the Great Depression start for kids? The Great Depression was a time of great excellence. Tries during the 1930s. It began in the U.S., but quickly spread through the much of the world. During this time, many people were out of work, hungry, and homeless in the city. People would stand in long lines at soup kitchens to get a bite to eat. Tell us about that picture. What are we seeing in there? They're at store now, and they're trying to burn stuff. Collapse of the 1930s was started in the decadent. Unemployed jumped from jumped from less than three million in 1929 to four million in 1930, eight million in 1931, and twelve and one half million in 1932. In that year, a quarter of the nation's servants did not have a single employee or earner. Even though those for fortunate enough to have jobs suffered drastic pay cuts and reductions in hours. Only one company 
and ten failed to cut pay. And in 1932, the courts of all workers were on part-time schedules, ever, ever, averaging just 60% of the normal work week. The income collapse were, was terrifying in its scope and impacted by 1933 average family income had tumbled 40% from 2,300 and then people to just 1,500 four years later. What are we seeing there in that picture? Um, they don't have a lot of um, room. Since there are so many kids in orphanages, they don't have enough beds for everyone to see them. How many kids were in the orphan orphanages in the Great Depression? Thank you. Orphanages where they're spread out throughout the city? Probably not that many since it wasn't really popular for kids to go to orphanages. Brianna, how many nuns were there in the orphanage? Oh, you better study that.
It was once called Monopoly, but it couldn't be called anything like. You gotta say that. Fair use of. In your presentation, you noted that it was first developed in 1903, but why did it become so popular during the Great Depression? Because in the game, you have to like get money, and then the Depression is going to have money. The, the um, crash, it involves like one person gets money, and then usually in Monopoly, in the center, there's a lot of money, and if you land on one spot, you get all the money. Like, whoever gets them first. Like, when the stock market crashed, they know they got there first. I don't know. Alright. This is our skit slash presentation about inexpensive entertainment during the Great Depression. Yeah, it was gross. No matter how far I get, I never know what's going on. what you were showing in the skit before you move on to your pictures? We were showing about we were showing how kids in the Great Depression played Monopoly and what people did for entertainment like goldfish blowing contests, soapbox competitions, tens of videos competitions and more. We used to listen to music like swing, country folk and would have these competitions, dancing for days competitions and the record for the longest time anyone has ever danced during the Great Depression was five weeks and three whole days. They danced. We 
these are some musicians that played during the Great Depression. This is Duke Ellington. This is Count Basie. Go audience. We thought it'd be easiest to do a skit because if we're doing music and entertainment, we should just show and play music that, that they used to do and find and play inexpensive ways they used to keep them entertained. And we wanted to be different because most people are doing posters and tablets. Really? Um, Give him a final round of applause. Um, we're, we were researching hobos um, about the, in the Great Depression, and we're doing a skit on it, and it's about two ho um, a hobo trying to get a job. We need to vote, people. Our company has been thriving since my great granddaddy took it over. There has been an increase in applications from the hobo, from the homeless. Um, here's a fill out a job application. We're in a meeting right now. Uh, yeah, it's right outside my office place. Okay. And if you have any money, yeah. here, here you go. Thank you. Hey, oh, sorry. I know we need money, but we can't give you the job. Sorry. You even get the fact that you have no clue how much of an opportunity you are investing up with me. I hope you know that I was the best thing teller in the area. I get that, but I think we can't no. job out job we might be experienced, but obviously can keep themselves in check. I never thought that something like this could ever happen to me. Hobos have hard times trying to get their lives back on track, but sometimes people don't show enough sympathy, sympathy or none at all. Thank you. <laughs> Questions for them. Let's go, audience. Questions. The information, so we like all put it together in like different ways. How hard 
we were pretty challenging for many reasons, but we thought that getting a job and trying to get themselves back in check was the biggest Kirsten. part of them. Sorry. What was the job? What were some of the jobs they were advocating for? Um, some of them were like um, bank tellers, like the one. Alexis was like one of the hobos who was a bank teller and stuff, and they wanted to get another job. And yeah. the train station, yeah, was a big one. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Eager, seated orphans in a poster. Um. The Great Depression had many effects on children. The low employment rate made it so that families couldn't support their children. <coughs> the parents didn't have enough money to provide for their children. Sometimes the parents died and no one could support them. Different or orphanages served different food. However much children in orphanages would eat plain seeds with bits of bread. When there, were enough, when there was nothing else to eat, the, they had to eat oatmeal for weeks at a time. Other times, children in orphanages had nothing to eat. During these difficult times, they would eat anything they could find. During the Great Depression, orphanages ranged, ranged in sizes. Most weren't big enough to fit all the children. There weren't a lot of beds, so children had to either share or sleep on the floor. There weren't many rooms or places to sleep. During the Depression, a quarter of the nation's families did not have a single employed wage earner or a person with a job who was earning money. Even those fortunate enough to have jobs so, suffered drastic pay cuts and lost a lot of hours. The loss of work and wages forced many parents to place their children in orphanages because they would not afford to take care of them. A large number of a large number of children were sent to orphanages during the Great Depression as a result of this kind of financial hardship. Orphanages would not decide whether to or not to accept babies depending on the surprises they had. Sometimes orphanages would not accept new babies because they did not have enough diapers or baby food to take care of them. Most kids would have to wear, ra wear rags. The, people's at, the people at the orphanages would so the other. Everyone else would have to wear donated clothes that were fixed up to win. Most kids would play with their hands and make up creative games that they would make food by for themselves. Most siblings, most siblings were separated because either the people adopting them couldn't afford both of them, or one would have died, would, would have already ran away from the orphanage. Um, this one is a uh, uh, big orphanage with a lot of orphan kids. That one is a woman selling her kids, and that's just a homeless family that we put up there with two kids. This one is a sign for people to adopt kids from the orphanage. This one is skinny orphanage. Kids in an orphanage, and this one is an orphan kid working for an orphanage. Thank you. Would they accept color orphans? Maggie? What did the orphanages do if they didn't have enough room for the children? They would probably not take them in. So, so children's parents were so poor they were selling them. So these kids would go up on the streets and poor, but you're saying they're so poor they wouldn't even get any schooling. Probably. Probably. Orphans are kids that went during the Great Depression with no families or no homes, so they lived in an orphanage. Here is 
the orphanage, people feeding all the kids that go to the orphanage, the orphans. So. Orphanages. Orphanages are homes kids go to when their parents die and leave them so there are other adults that take care of them. Till some other families decide to take them, take them in and foster care them. In this picture is a whole bunch of kids, orphans, there's the orphanage, and there's the Christians and the people that take care of them. Foster families are families that take care of the orphans slash kids that are lost their real families by passing away or can't take care of them anymore. Here's a, a picture of the kid that lost their family and here's a big family that took care of them. The end. Stay up there so you can answer some questions. Okay. Questions for the ladies? One more question. Thank you. 
up, ask these ladies some questions. Yeah, Lynn. So if you were a girl and you had a job, you would get fired just for being a girl or just because you wanted to be water? Just because you were a different gender and they didn't expect as much of you. Con, con, 
Questions for Katie. Okay. <laughs> Didn't hear that? Okay, who else has got questions? This was your job was to listen and ask questions, audience. Katie, round of applause. So this is how our story begins. Um, we're doing a skit, and it's about hobos trying to put over a dog. Okay, thank you. You guys stay here. We're gonna go get some more. What do you want, boss? Come down to my office and tell me. Okay, boss. I'll be down there in a minute. Okay, boys. What have you guys been doing when you're out there with no jobs? We've been hopping trains all night and day to find a job. Do any of Do any of you have a family? I do a wife and four kids. That doesn't matter. Then the bone with kids gets a job. Can you guys come back up to the middle here? Oh, 
Okay, you guys are going to get five questions right now. Any questions? Dylan. What were you having trouble with in the beginning? Oh, good. We don't have Owen. He was in our group. He was going to be Hobo too. Uh, so one person had two Yeah. You need to Okay. That was a good question, Tim. Others? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. What do you think the most difficult part was? Um, trying to act in front of the one that you Keep falling on people. How long did it take you to like break the parts? Um, it didn't take us that long. I think the most part that took us from was What's the most interesting or important things that you guys learned about the life of hobos during the Great Depression? Because that's what the purpose of this project was, to learn about the topics that we're researching. That some of the people who still had jobs cared for hobos who didn't have jobs but had people that had to care about. Final question? Oh, Jacob. Um. Um. I'm gonna agree with Craigley. That was definitely just a little bit choppy. If you would have just a little bit more practice, then it would have been really easy to Was that a question? Okay, I asked for a question. Yes, What if Owen was here? Would the skit be longer? Yes. Okay. Okay, so not having Owen really threw you guys off. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Give them a round of applause for their efforts.